Hello, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. This week, a bit of a new location. We're up in my studio, up near the airfield. And um, the film this week is a kind of a follow on from the Westland Whirlwind, really. Uh, the the uh, people used to get confused, or they thought the Westland Whirlwind was both a twin engine fighter and some thought it was the Westland Whirlwind, Westland Whirlwind helicopter. So I thought I'd, did, I thought I'd just, just just delve a bit into the uh, Westland Whirlwind helicopter and a little bit of history about Westlands at Yeovil. I hope you enjoy the film. It's a compilation of of several bits and pieces of documentary, and I really hope you find it interesting. Well, Mr. Ryan, this is the latest Westland product from the civil side. What are special features of this machine? Well, it's, as you see, a three-engined, uh, six-seater cabin monoplane, and the leading feature of it is that we can fly on any two out of the three engines with full load. It's got a tail trimming gear, and that, in conjunction with the rudder bass gear, can enable the pilot to fly pretty well entirely, hands and feet off. Yeah. Look, Jeff, just turn around, will you? Just show this gentleman how she, she, she moves around. So easily, manhandling. Oh, Mr. Ryan, this is a wheel. It's a latest type air wheel on caster bearings and enables it to 360 degree travel in any direction. It just swivels round on this fork here. Yeah. Isn't it lovely view on the countryside now? We're right up, you see. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Look, that hand was parked down there. There's, a, there's a, the clubhouse. You see, there, there's the pilot's dashboard. There's all the instruments that he's got to keep the machine going by. But now we're going lower down. We're right down 200 feet over, over the uh, hand was parked up. Now we're going to land. Hope we have a good one. <laughs> oh, we'll do our best. Compare the land plane, the new Westland cooperation craft designed and built and flown in the same year, with low landing speed and maximum flying speed faster than any other in the service. There's a war going on down there. A war of deadly hide and seek, fought by small bodies of men out on their own in wild, inaccessible jungle. Out on their own, but not isolated. Supplies can be brought in and casualties taken out by that maid of all work, the helicopter. Another kind of war is going on here, a war against pests and disease. And again, the helicopter is in the front line. Not a war down there, just a lot of little private fights. The policeman's daily nightmare, the traffic jam. The helicopter helps to sort it all out prevent accidents and so save life. Saving life, that's a bull point with the helicopter. It made history by saving over 800 lives in the disastrous floods in England and Holland in 1953. It has evacuated over 20,000 casualties from the trouble spots of the world.
saved shipwrecked mariners. And many a ditched airman owes his life to it. All this is made possible by the fact that the helicopter is capable of hovering flight. There is a long history of research and courageous experiment behind this seemingly nonchalant achievement. The first solution that promised success was the autogyro. Here, the rotor blades are not power driven, but revolve as the result of the forward movement of the machine, maintaining lift even at slow forward speeds, though the autogyro could not actually hover. In 1934, Westland Aircraft designed and built a five-seater autogyro in collaboration with a pioneer, Sierva. And then in 1936, a two-seater based on a machine designed by La Paire. Power was applied to the rotor blades to accelerate them rapidly to take off lift. The drive was then declutched and the autogyro moved away under propeller power. These were the forerunners of the single rotor helicopter, such as the Westland Dragonfly. Other designers have sought a solution with more complicated rotor systems. The Fokker side by side. The Becquet coaxial. The Flettner intermeshing. The Flying Banana tandem. And the Air Horse three rotor configuration. Yet always, in complete contrast to these complex systems, is the classic simplicity of the single rotor, first used by Sierva and retained by Sikorsky. On the 14th of September, 1939, Sikorsky first flew this machine, and from it, in conjunction with the United Aircraft Corporation of America, he developed other machines whose reliability and safety were proved on active service in World War II. In 1947, Westland signed an agreement with the American company, enabling them to build British versions based on the Sikorsky design. This bold and far-reaching policy decision ensured for Britain a domestic supply of helicopters of proved worth without burdening the government with development costs. It meant diverting the engineering and drawing off his skills from the fixed wing aircraft for which the company had been famous since 1915 and of which the Wyvern was the last. The pioneer Westland helicopter was the Dragonfly adopted and extensively used by the Royal Navy and later all over the world. Equipped with a winch, this machine has accomplished thousands of air-sea rescues. Two years later came the Whirlwind, a larger machine of greater lifting capacity, now the most extensively used British helicopter in production. It has been proved in operation under all conceivable conditions from the Arctic to the tropics. Navy, Army and Air Force, as well as civil operators in the trackless outbacks, have found it strikingly efficient and reliable for all the great variety of jobs a helicopter is called upon to do. good engineering uses the simplest possible machinery to achieve a given purpose. The single rotor helicopter is the simplest and most efficient machinery for achieving practical, controlled, vertical flight. And this is the basis for all Westland machines. A second lifting rotor, for example, far from increasing the margin of safety, not only doubles cost and maintenance, but is far more vulnerable to failure owing to the gear's mechanical complexity. The Westland rotor head, skillfully engineered to give the highest factors of safety, incorporates two novel features. Offset flapping hinges, which permit a wide range of travel of the center of gravity, enabling the cabin load distribution to be varied without the necessity of using ballast. Then, to prevent a blade being raised by gusty wind conditions when starting up, a flapping restrainer is incorporated. This feature is especially valuable for carrier-borne helicopters. Torque is compensated by the tail rotor, which acts as a rudder. But even without it, the machine is under complete control when auto-rotating. It is, however, the normal maneuverability of these helicopters which is so astounding.
to be landed with confidence in seemingly impossible places. The single rotor system sweeps out less ground space than twin rotors, which is important when operating in confined spaces such as jungle clearings or close to tall buildings, and makes the pilot's judgment easier, as he is at the center of a single disc. In common with all other helicopters, in the extremely rare event of a power failure in the air, the pilot can make a controlled landing. By a simple downward movement of the pilot's pitch lever, there is an immediate change of blade angle, giving a glide with the rotor blades freewheeling like those of the early autogyros. The measure of efficiency of the driving system of a helicopter is the relationship of pounds of fuel consumed to tons of lift developed. Westland have experimented with many different systems of drive, including tip-mounted power units. Thus, the small Westland helicopters utilize piston engines of various well-proved makes, such as the British Alvis or the Pratt & Whitney. For the larger helicopters, there is a clear case for the gas turbine power plant. Westland helicopters, fully approved by flying experience under all conditions, made by a firm that is always looking ahead and has always been in the forefront of helicopter development, are available in a range of capacities that can meet any immediate purpose. Thank you so much for watching and uh, really appreciate you sticking with it to the end and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Cheers. All the very best.